No shui bow. This, this, this is the holy computer. So this is the first of three major versions of the, the Block 2. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is serial number 14 out of those 15. And so here's the program we executed. Um, this was used for ground testing, so instead of core rope, they would use these core rope simulators that let you feed in your test program. Yeah, so uh, this is the erasable memory module. It's uh, got uh, 2K words of uh, core memory in it. I think that makes, that's a, no, nope, even that's not. Which is our 370 input, right? Right. And we have some news on the channel. Uh, we have our first official sponsor, uh, PCB Way, uh, who offered to sponsor our PCBs for the AGC, which turns out is a good thing because we were just hard at design working hard designing PCBs uh, so Carl wants to turn his prototype uh, a, a disk key into a fully designed one and he has designed uh, this PCB so it's fairly complex it's 10 layers there you go you have the 3d picture of it so he doesn't have the wires flying all over anymore and Ken uh, has been doing uh, the PCB for the uh, rope emulators and they have just arrived uh, from Shenzhen. PCB Way has a nice Christmassy box here for us. And inside, my board nicely shrink wrap. And here, Carl, why, why don't you? Well, that is a heavy board. Yes, because it's five of them. It's like a paperback book. Right. Okay. Can I weigh it? So. Oh, because you have five of them. Right. right. That's their minimum. Order is five. I've just got simple little um, two-way boards. These are going to be beagle bone capes to hook up to the AGC rope emulator. All right. Uh, I used KiCad to design these, KiCad, um, whatever it is. So yours designed by KiCad and Carl's design with Design Spark. Design Spark. They're sort of the two major three. Well, well and I, use, Eagle. I use Eagle. So the board looks fantastic and thanks again PCB Way for sponsoring the channel and we hope you guys can also use their services for your own board. You have made improvement to your bunch of wire this yes, slight slight change there. slight changes. And thanks to the PCB we just opened up the other day. Right, I put on the 398 components and <laughs> it's ready to go. It looks much better, I have to say. Yeah, I still have to do the, you know, the screens, the diffusers, and the button assembly is next. But ready to see it go? Give us. Okay, so there, that's the static lines and stuff. So now it's going to simulate some keystrokes. Put it in the test mode, so it's going to test out all of the lights. Uh huh. And then putting in program 63, so that goes up there, and then tell it to display 63, some, does it descent? One of the landing. The braking one? Or? Yes, and then this is some statistics, except it froze and gave you a program. <laughs> oh, what? Ouch! <laughs> so uplink's going on, of course. And then so it's, it's failing according to the story. Yes. Ken has some updates on his uh, rope emulator project also that I wanted to show. Okay, so this is one of the two rope emulator boxes that Raytheon built in 1970. This end plugs into the Apollo guidance computer to simulate the core rope. Core ropes are the equivalent of uh, ROM, uh, where the program used to reside. And here you can see a rope module being weaved at uh, Raytheon. Uh, wires uh, would go in or around the ferrite core to make a 1 or a 0 uh, lengthy process, obviously. And when flown, the AGC had six of the flat uh, core rope modules you see on the left. Uh, instead, on our machines, we have two rope simulator boxes that uh, fill the entire compartment. This end plugs into a special aerospace connector that I got. 
this will wire up to this board I built. Um, PCB Wave manufactured the circuit board for us. Um, this will plug into the BeagleBone and the result is we'll be able to load software into the BeagleBone and then feed it into the Polo Guidance computer and run any of the Polo software that we want to. And the contacts are corroded. And I cannot even get continuity from one side of the pin to the other, basically. Where I put? Haha! <laughs> Toothbrush and the oxet. Electric toothbrush and the oxet. Alright. So that will do it. Well, it certainly got my brush all dark, so it removed something. Should, should I try probing it again? Yeah, Let's yeah, I said just do it. See if it's any better. So did we repair it? Yeah, I guess so. Power pin go goes to the power here, ground goes to the ground here, so, so that works. So, so the, the, these are the, the dipsticks, which are their wire wrap packaging technology that they use instead of sockets. So what happens is the, the wire wrap pins are connected to the, the outer sockets, and then the ICs go in and then they're pinched between the outer socket and the inner socket and then go to these contacts on the top. And so the contacts on the top are mostly not used except for decoupling capacitors mm -hmm. and um, timing resistors and capacitors. So I, I would say just remove every IC and then wipe them with a, a cloth that right. has some... The oxygen right. yeah, right. right. Yeah. But then when I check the grounds, they all seem to be disconnected. And so my current theory is that it's mechanical. So there's spring over here, but there's almost zero spring over here. And, and this, these are splayed out, so you can see it. Because mm -hmm. I always have to bend them a little and get them into sockets and stuff. And I don't know the purpose of that, but we are certainly victims of it today. So it needs to be a tight fit on that top. But I, th I think, uh, yeah, we just bend it straight and that, that works. Inspection. Okay, the, they're all facing the same direction. They've all got the... Okay, why don't you put it back and see, see if, it, uh, if it was the correct to the problem. Wait, did I test the wrong right, one? I think so. There you go. Repaired. That, that means we have to take every IC and reband it and we'll make sure we have the right mm -hmm. uh, I've done much more eight of them. Or? I've done much more tedious things in this process. Right. Yes. So 38999, there's a million ways to key them and we can never find the right one. Notice the good use of teletype tape. Alright. Aha! Now we have the face problem. Yeah, so I just have to make it shorter. So it's a little bit too thick, so we need some more. 38 triple nine connector surgery. are connected.
So everything has tested good except uh, the erasable memory. We think it has a broken wire inside. So, uh, we're expecting on uh, every voltage input pin to the memory, uh, we're expecting that pin to be connected to two inhibit lines. And so on, uh, on this voltage pin, it's connected to the two inhibit lines next to it. Uh, and same for this one. But this voltage pin has this inhibit line, but this one is not beeping. And might you have an inkling of what it is because it's, it's a mode of failure that had been observed already at the time. So these early erasable memory modules had a design flaw that plagued the program early on, um, where motion of the core stack inside the module uh, would shear the wires in uh, in the potting material. And so the, the inner core stack, so all the ferrite cores uh, themselves were, were potted, and then the uh, the potted stack was placed into this mechanical frame, and then the whole thing was potted again. The These wires leading from the, the pins going into the computer um, into this inner core stack are the ones that break. Um, and so this diagram is showing with X's on the wires where um, where breaks were observed in MIT's studying of this problem. And the one big problem is that it's spotted. Right. It's spotting inside. So we, in order to repair it, we have to unpot it or a portion of it. Mm -hmm. So before we do that, we like to basically x-ray the module, see if we can find the fault. That's the sideboard and it goes through it fine and I swear they had seen the failure in the 1960s but we don't see any, so fine. <laughs> 